So between Arthur and foul play, mm -hmm. just normal dialogue had changed for normal people, yeah, it and had and mm -hmm. different words had come into play. You also, you know, I, I've not seen the remake of Arthur, which flopped, but my guess is that. Things that made Arthur work completely in whatever year that was. Right. Um, the original work now; those things don't don't work now. They, you know, it's the the story sometimes becomes the wrong time story. Sure. Um, also, you know, you can't replace John Gielgud with anybody. You know, usually to meet someone like this, one must go to a bowling alley. You know, I'm, uh, I'll alert the media. You know, it's like this is a guy that has that delivery that can yeah. make those lines sing. Where you know these days, you know, some other actor. That's one of the weird problems with remakes. Is often what happens is a, a remake was six. A movie was successful because of one sp particular actor and one particular time period. And when you change the time period and the actor, it no longer works. Footloose. Footloose. Okay, Absolutely. Bacon, there is a there's a great example. Twelve year old going Foot to the theater. Seeing Kevin Bacon, Footloose, with my best friend. yeah, absolutely yeah. works. The original works. Remake, not so much. Um, and you know, the the thing with generational dialogue is one of those things where you know a, a piece of slang or a line that works at one period of time doesn't work in the next period of time. Which is why sometimes it's it's better just to make up your own slang or your own whatever. Um, right, but also to the problems. Of one generation are going to be totally different because at that time, Laurie Singer's dad didn't want her dancing. Exactly. Didn't want her with the Kevin Bacon character. Nowadays, probably would be on the same level, but there'd be something different. The dad would be going on somebody's Instagram, seeing, I don't like the photos he's posting, so it doesn't translate. Which which brings up yeah, which brings up another thing is you know again this may not have anything to do with it, but we allow we now live in a world where there are everyone's got a computer in their pocket. Everyone's got all of these things. So often, what happens with a remake that gets updated is all of those things that we didn't have then, we do have now, and it has to change the way the story works. Which means, which means it's probably not a good idea to do remakes. But I don't think Hollywood's going to listen to anyone about that. And the, you know, the the remakes. If you're doing a remake, you have to be prepared to figure out what the essence of why that film worked is. And then adapt the, everything except that essence, and that is often the tough part with Hollywood. Is they think that it's you know I have this this thing. Uh, my a friend of mine's cousin uh, wrote a script, and the producer said, "This what this script needs is a donkey in it," and he's like, "A what?" He goes, "A donkey in it because." Um, Bachelor Party had a donkey in it, and it made money. And then you put down the, <laughs> the list of movies with donkeys that made money. You're like, this producer has the weirdest narrow tunnel vision of donkey. You know, films with donkeys make money. Look at all these examples. You're like, I don't think it was the donkey that was the made all those films <laughs> successful. But that ends up being producer thought is that it's some weird specific to what the movie is, rather than something underneath that that's deeper that goes into. Um, Rebellion, or you know, all of these things that might be the, you know, the again, uh, man, I haven't seen Footloose since it came out, probably, but the idea of the um, sophisticated city type guy going to the small town where everything is very formal, and he is the more rebellious guy, and so he basically creates this rebellion through dance, right? You know, and that that formal world, I don't think we have much of that anymore because of communications. I mean, the the kids in that small in a small town before we you couldn't turn on the TV and see all kinds of stuff. You they weren't listening to hip hop. You know, does hip hip hop probably dates me, huh? Um, well, they, they, that's you know, a '90s era. That's a '90s yeah. thing, huh? <laughs> they weren't listening to rap. See, this is and there's the problem. See, if you were to take some story that was a hip hop story and try to adapt it for now, it's like that's old. That's you know, but but kids today. Can go on can go on YouTube and see everything, right. so they're not, you know, the 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 problem with uh, with you know remaking Footloose is that those kids are already exposed to all that music. So being a rebel and showing them dance and showing them all this stuff can't work. They already know all this stuff exists. Right. The the world is a you know a bigger place. We can now go on YouTube and watch something that's happening in another culture all the way across the world. And that becomes part of our lives sometimes. Sure, and have so, instant updates about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those things make it tough to write scripts sometimes. You know, the 
the, the cell phone made it tough to write horror movies because the question always became, why don't they just call the, the cops and everything? And my solution to that is always, they do. Um, they don't have service. No, they, they don't have service is, is, I think, is the thing that, although I never have service any place. So it's like, you know, if a serial killer attacked me, you know, and I tried to call the cops, it would be like, no service. Hell, I'm like across from a Verizon store, um, but uh, which actually there are there's a Verizon store where you they have no cell service for Verizon there, um, but uh, it's in the valley. But uh, the the thing that I always do is I have them connect. So I have a horror story where they she connects to the police and the police don't believe a damn thing she's saying because she's saying you know there's a. It's not a guy in a hockey mask, but you know, when you say there's a guy in a hockey mask with a machete that's been killing us one by one, there's a good chance the police won't believe that. But there's a great movie from, oh man, probably the 70s or early 80s called The Stepfather, which has it's been remade in a bad version. But the original has a great scene where the female lead, last to die, um, picks up the phone, calls the police, gets through, of course, you know, home phone, calls the police, and then the police officer comes and you think, it's the cavalry, she's saved, killed. So now it, it works even twice as good because now we have the authority figure comes and they're taken off the table. So now even the authorities cannot stop this killer, right. which mm -hmm. works.